Hello guys, welcome back to another exciting video. Today we have a drugstore product. This is new Essence Love, Luck and Dragons eyeshadow palette that just launched. I think currently is avail available only in Europe and usually on my channel for the most part I do review the high-end makeup products especially eyeshadows and I was curious as with the color story and everything I was curious how this one will perform this is really inexpensive nine pen eyeshadow palette with different finishes we also have wet and dry texture right here which is this first eyeshadow this palette has 24 months shelf life made in China if you want to see swatches full in-depth tutorial how I created this look and what are my final thoughts when it comes to this palette make sure to stay tuned till the end of the video I will walk you through everything that I experienced today with this palette and so here it is the new Essence Love Luck and Dragons eyeshadow palette which contains nine different textures of a eyeshadow and here we have the swatches 10 of them because the first one is the same shadow here it is when it's applied with a wet damp brush and this one is regular matte you can see in opacity how different it is we also have some shimmers some settings and mattes let's start first and foremost the base is really crucial for any application of the eyeshadow so i'm using pillow base in 02 applied that all over my lid and i am going to start you can see i already messed up with my palette so i'm gonna start with this shade right here which is actually wet and dry formula so what i'm gonna do instead of the water i'm gonna take fixing spray but if you want to make this texture waterproof use duraline because this is not waterproof so i haven't tried that today but i will try it i tried it with the fixing spray so basically what I'm gonna do and what is the easiest thing for me take a little flat brush brush like this and I'm going to have to make it like and you'll see you'll have a lot of pigment on it or you can directly spray into your pan but what I've done I took a fixing spray on my brush and just swirl around the product um, for the demonstrating purposes I'm doing this on my hand but you can definitely do this and it's easier if you do this on a makeup plate where you usually mix your foundations and liquids and everything um, this one I realized that dries really fast so you have to work fast fast with it and I'm actually um, kind of outlining my eye this is what I usually do so I thought why not why not to try it like this like I mentioned you do have to work kind of uh, fast with this and I will suggest for you to use this one more like creating lines rather than using this as your base. I do love more creamy base because this one, as you can see, once it's dry, it has harsh edges. I will make it work, but this is definitely not the best formula to do this. And like I mentioned, it, quickly, it really dries really quickly. And at this point, I can't use it, so I have to go again. I'm repeating this once again. I won't go like too much because if I apply too much of a product and I'm going to uh, use this as a dry eyeshadow later, I'm gonna have like cracked eyeshadow, <laughs> if that makes sense sorry more like um, cracked base where it's patchy it's dry and not really can do much about it no matter how it looks like right now I will fix this later I think you're gonna be shocked when you see how pigmented this one is it gets really really powdery so you'll have to take the excess off please don't forget that especially when you work with the pigment like this one thing that I realized right away, as you can clearly see, is the pigmentation. Of course, that is not all. We still have to see. We have to see how this will blend. And I'm taking clean, a little bit bigger blending brush. This goes right into my crease. And I started to blend. And you can see how much pigment still there is i'm gonna i'm not gonna go too much inside my inner part of the eye i will apply later as well more of this product so once it's blended it's like this you can see that it's definitely diffused 
and I don't know if you ask me it is more like on a drier side when it comes to formulation applying same shade again so once it's blended it really does go um it does go sheer taking bigger blending brush to diffuse the edges before I go with my next color I will go back to this shade later for now, you can see how saturated my brushes are with this. I want to go with this yellow shade right here. Of course, take the excess off and going to connect this yellow shade on the edges of the previous one. What I wanted to say, this shade is not like super bright yellow, but it definitely has that like yellow undertone. And if you are combining these shades, they, they look really pretty together. I saturated the tip of my brush with a yellow shade and this one as well is really pigmented mm, and I really do love the combo between these two shades reminds me of uh, sunset but with different color story I'm also blending this area right here and lifting this color right towards my eyebrow I don't have lighter matte shade than this one so this is gonna be like my last matte shade like the lightest one adding more of that yellow it turns out to be like more kind of orangey once it's blended all depending how you blend it you can see how the previous shade now this bright noon shade it's been like really really diffused now i'm gonna use with the tip of my brush just a tiny bit of this color and i will apply this one in between the yellow and the bright pink shade yeah definitely reminding me of some crazy <laughs> sunset <laughs> story once again moving to towards this bright shade and this one i will even drag that color towards my lashes on the outer portion only take the axis off like if you get this palette or if you try to work with this palette already um you'll see what i mean when it comes to this specific shade how pigmented it gets um but once you blend it it kind of a goes like uh, goes really powdery you know and it's just kind of a lot wipes off so you have to be careful to before anything take the excess off of your brush and the way you apply it i'll suggest like you can pack the eyeshadow of course but when you are reapplying eyeshadow i would rather go one step at a time you know than then go like in full opacity a lot of fallout a lot of the color i don't know I would just yeah use it a little bit one step at a time i'm going in with this shade right here i'm going to damp that shade with a little bit of fixing spray and apply it underneath my eyebrow um i can see in the formulation that this performs way differently than those high-end shimmers or toppers wet effect or foiled pigments um you really have to be careful with each step if you're applying it on a smaller amount it diffuses easily so yeah it's a bit different than the high-end formula that is for sure but the shade works really nice with everything that we have so far this right here looks still a little bit patchy from what i've tried before so i'm reapplying that shade that I already had before and you know what i want to go a little bit outside because i'm gonna go use that deepest shade matte shade but just like a regular eyeshadow I'm going to diffuse this with a clean brush just on the edges now let's try this eyeshadow on its own and even though this is like really bright color now the one that i'm using right now can you can also blend nicely with that one just take my time to blend it also want to do what i want to do to create a little bit of depth so whatever has been left on my brush um from this deepest matte shade going in like this taking a smaller brush and just kind of diffuse it going with a mixture of these two shades and also this yellow on the edge to add more color adding a little bit of the darkest once again i want to move to this yellow shade again and with a small brush i want to connect that one right here 
Right now, I'm not gonna go um, towards my inner corner all the way. And so here I am spreading the color and connecting it towards this one. Reapplying it once again because this one got um, diffused as well once it's blended. Let's add some glitters. I just wanted to show you. This is how my hand looks like once I'm trying new textures and swatching. It's crazy. So first I'm gonna go with this shade right here and like this one can get really um, chunky. So what I do, warm it up to get rid of any access because it's a lot of access so that it can um, stick to the skin better. Because if it's um, too much of a product, if it's flake, it's not gonna work. So the where I'm going to place that one is right between um, this yellow and this neon kind of a pink. This is not my inner corner shade, but as you can see, this one is pretty, looking pretty beautiful. And this, this is without the, like without any setting spray. And as you can see here, how chunky this is. So with a little bit of harsh bullet brush, I'm going to spread it. So before I forget, this one and this one are having same texture and they are like super charged with a the pigment. These two, um, they have different formulation and I have to be much more careful how do I apply them. They're different in opacity as well. This one is like much more satin and I'm not gonna use this one today, but basically I think everything rest I'm gonna use, we'll see. If you are picking up this same shade with the brush, you will have even more chunks. So make sure to warm it up first again on your arm before you go with the product. So this is what's happening. I'm talking a lot here about the formulation because that will help you a lot when it comes to application. Now I am going to use this shade and I will apply this one in my inner corner. And now the combo that I really, really enjoyed is, yeah. It was this shade right here, which almost looked like, I don't know, like kind of a duochrome. I, yeah, I do have a little bit of yellow underneath, but really nice shade. And that one goes next to this one. And I'm going to spread that shade, mix it together with this yellow one and just make it have its end right here. With the deepest matte shade, I am placing it a little bit more because emphasizing this area right here, I feel like my brush is a bit too much saturated, but I kind of like this. Like the color story, when you combine everything, it's really nice. Mm, I need to diffuse this a little bit and I think we're gonna go move on to a lower lash line for now. And later I will add, of course, liner. Okay, we are moving on to a lower lash line and this is the first shade that I'm using. Don't forget to take the axis off. This is my connection shade. It connects everything that we already have here. I will blend it. And I'm still leaving this inner part um, kind of open and I will go with a different color later. So I decided to go with a matte and really pack that eyeshadow. Once it's packed like this, I want to connect it with a smaller brush going in just on the other portion of my eye. So this is how it looks for now. I will apply some lashes. I will also apply a little bit more of the liner and I'm thinking to even to apply some rhinestones. We'll see. So this is how this palette looks like once I've applied mascara. For the bottom mascara, I did apply blue one and I also added up some rhinestones. The mascara was from Pat McGrath Azure Allure from Bijou Collection, Dark Star Mascara. First I wanted to say, I don't know, for whatever reason, I really thought this eyeshadow palette is going to be way bigger than it is. Obviously, uh, we, this is uh, cardboard, we don't have any mirror in here. So we have different finishes here. First, we have wet and dry texture, which you can activate this with the water, but the thing is, this is not waterproof. And I didn't realize on this eye, I uh, had a issue when it, when it gets like a little patchy. You can also use Duraline for that. If you want to make this kind of a waterproof, it's not my, favorite formula when it comes to uh, wet and dry texture. It is a little bit 
harder to work with so instead I would just probably for today's look go just with the as a regular eyeshadow powder you know one last thing that I wanted to say is that this wet and dry texture I wouldn't suggest using that as a wet eyeshadow because it dries really fast and it's you can't stretch it like that in a sense that it will seamlessly work I had issues while blending that as my base so I would use that rather as a kind of an eyeliner but it is not waterproof so make sure that you skip the part where you use that in your waterline then we have these three mattes we have two duochromes which these i um initially realized how different these perform and they are really pigmented where these two they are different in texture in opacity and they're a little bit hard to work with especially if you're applying with a brush if you're going to just use one shade and swatch that across the lid then that's fine but for the small detail like i applied it here underneath my eyebrow the color is beautiful but it takes time to combine everything it's not blending the best these two kind of a metallic duochrome shimmers oh my god these look gorgeous like the way they combine and also on top of this bright pink shade right here it is it is just stunning a uh, shade that i haven't used today is this one right here which for me it feels more like a satin uh finish so i don't know i would divide this in wet and dry texture mattes these two kind of a duochromes which are not super shifty but they do shift a little bit and then we have like these kind of uh they're like chunky toppers i don't know how to describe this um they're supposed to have like a kind of a wet effect formula i think but the application it's not like the high end and um this here kind of a satin finish again the one that i haven't used and i don't think i used this one as well yeah these two anyways however i don't know how this will wear throughout the day but the look considering the price the look came out amazing if you ask me this transition from this yellow towards these two mattes gorgeous i really do love it so to finish off with kind of my final thoughts uh, is this formula comparable or do i enjoy it when it comes to the blending experience and some other high-end products it is not like if you watch the beginning of applying these certain mattes they are so 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 pigmented it is insane how pigmented these are crazy crazy pigmented but once you blend it they are kind of uh, powdery and you have to be careful each step that you apply them to not lose the pigment so that basically comes down to its formulation but um when it comes to price point uh this palette actually when i consider that this palette actually exceeded my expectation and it kind of reminds me i don't know now when i combine so many colors it kind of reminds me of a some variation of the sunset i don't know it's beautiful i really love the effect i love the combo of these colors let me know what you think is this something that is on your radar would you like to try this what do you think about this type of makeup look this is much more kind of a col colorful look and I would say it reminds me more for a springtime being this colorful. I love it. I love how this turned out. And I'm honestly happy that I purchased this a little bit more time into making this work because of the formulation. But other than that, I really do love it. Let's just hope that this will stand um, throughout the day that it won't kind of uh, lose its pigment, so to speak. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you. Bye.